Common Core, what our kids are taught in school, is a hot topic across the country and here in the Commonwealth. Massachusetts and over 40 other states adopted those national education standards back in 2010. But now, some are dropping Common Core, opting for more local control, and there's a movement to do that here through a statewide referendum next year. Connecting Point correspondent Carolee McGrath spoke with Donna Calorio, a candidate for Worcester School Committee who chairs the End Common Core Massachusetts Ballot Initiative, and with special education teacher Carrie Foley to learn why they're among those opposing the current standards. We started the petition as a, um, it was like a natural progression of what we've been doing in the state of Massachusetts for the last two years. About two years ago, we started a parent-teacher organization, totally volunteer, called the Common Core Forum. And from there, we would go around the state and we would educate parents and other, you know, taxpayers about what the Common Core was. And the Common Core is federal standards that tell us what to do at each grade, what to teach our children. And from there, we realized that um, even though we were working really hard at educating, even though we've reached out to many, many uh, folks, that we had an opportunity now to push this one step further, to get the recognition and, and, and get, get to the point where we can turn back or move forward and um, have the standards that we had in 2010, which are the Massachusetts standards. So we decided to put a ballot question on for 2016. So we're in the process now of collecting the signatures to put this question on the ballot. Now, Carrie, you met Donna at, at one, really online in, in Facebook, um, talking about Common Core. Why are you opposed to it? I've seen, at first, as, as teachers in a building, we took it as just the next um, set of practices that were going to come in to a school. So what happened was we saw a gradual introduction to Common Core my, from my experience. Uh, I didn't see that it was becoming a vast difference from the old standards until I started to really pick apart the standards to try to plan my curriculum. And that's happened over the past two to three years. At first, like I said, it came in very slowly. The last two years, what I've seen is there's a lot of unpacking, they call it, that has to be done of the standards. When you read the Common Core standards versus the old standards, there's a lot of room for interpretation on what a standard might mean. There's a lot of room where I might think the standard is telling me to teach one way, another teacher might read it another way. The way the standards are written are, is very, it's, it's very intense with language. There's a lot of um, words that you don't necessarily read as a teacher and think, okay, that tells me exactly what learning point my students need to have. It's a lot of um, saying, you know, we'll explicitly um, pick out quotes in a text, we'll explicitly do this. But when you're planning curriculum and you're teaching a specific learning task, you don't necessarily explicitly pick out something in a text can mean a lot of different things to different people. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of debate um, among teachers on what's the best practice. And you know, people have, who have uh, supported, excuse me, Common Core, sure. including the, um, the NEA, have said, look, this is going to make our kids better problem solvers, better critical thinkers. What's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but unfortunately, the Common Core standards are inferior to our Massachusetts standards, which are number one in the country. And one of the things I just want to touch upon what Carrie had just mentioned is that two years ago in 2013, 73% of the teachers nationwide um, were um, in favor of the Common Core. Now that has dropped to 40% in 2015. So in the last two years, when the, the teachers really got into the standards, they realized that they are inferior and that the Massachusetts, in Massachusetts, our standards are much better. Now, when you talk about different trade organizations or different um, nonprofits, they're not teachers. We need to talk to the front line. The front line is the teachers and the parents who are doing the homework every day. And the teachers think it's a nightmare. The parents think it's a nightmare. And the kids are crying because they're so frustrated with these, with these standards that the teachers don't know what to do with. Carrie, is it just hype, though? You know, you hear you know, certain groups of people, pockets of people who might have political motivations who say, we don't want Common Core. We don't want the federal government involved in our classroom. Tell me a little bit about um, you know, your political persuasion, and, and do you think it's just a group of conservatives, as, as it has often been la labeled by the media, that's stirring this up, or is it a broader group? I feel it's a broader group. I don't align with any certain party as a voter. I know that's, you know, I declare myself as independent. I actually 
before Common Core, before I started to see the impacts in the classroom, I didn't consider myself someone who paid attention to politics on a large level. I knew what was going on locally, I knew what was going on nationally, um, but I really wasn't paying attention to how legislators vote in new practices for schools in a way that then starts affecting my students and the way that I can teach them and the way they can learn. Um, I've, the more research I've done, the more I've seen this is really crossing all kinds of political lines. And I think any information out there that says it's one political party, I wouldn't agree with because like I said, I'm, I'm starting to pay attention to not which political party um, someone is affiliated with, but what they're actually saying about the standards and if they're citing research that comes from experts or if they're citing the same kind of words and wording that um, typically people who are pro-common core use, and I find it's all the same wording. Some people might listen to you and say, you know what, maybe Carrie's being a little weak. Maybe you're being a little weak. Shouldn't we have tough standards? Don't our kids deserve a little bit of tough love when, when we're talking about raising them up in the classroom? Well, there's nothing to say that the common core standards are rigorous. There's no data. This is, these are unproven standards. You know, so Massachusetts had proven standards. You know, when we did the ed reform, we put in things in our standards that would enrich the vocabulary, that would help the student with the comprehension, would increase their math skills, would put them on a path to STEM in many of the areas that they needed to be on. Common Core, there is no, nothing there. There's nothing to say, there's no research. It's not research-based. It's just, they're just using those words, but there's nothing behind it. Supporters of Common Core have said, look, it's going to cost Massachusetts money to get rid of it. We're five years in. What are you going to do now? I mean, you're just going to roll back to the old standards. And they say that they were outdated. So what we did is we invested over $100 billion in the education standards that we had from the ed reform in 92. So why did we just decide to abolish $100 billion of taxpayer dollars to put in this common core. You know, so I think it's never too late to turn back a, uh, you know, or a bad decision because this was a bad decision. And one of the things you're going to find when you talk about crossing party lines, the people that I have met throughout the state, whether it's from any political party, is one thing we all have in common. And Carrie, you can, you can vouch for this. We all have the children's best interest, number one. And that's what, how we all bonded. You know, we all want what's best for the children in Massachusetts, and we have the best standards. And in the last, um, let's see, the last couple of years, there is a national test called the NAEP test. Yes. And the NAEP test is in, um, the fourth grade reading is indicative of future readers. And what we have seen is Massachusetts between 11 and 13 has dropped five points. And when you drop five points in the NAEP test, something's wrong. And you're blaming Common Core. And I'm absolutely pointing to Common Core on this because we have seen this and we're seeing the kids are dropping in all levels. And, and five points may not seem like a lot, but when you, five points is equal to a half a year of lost learning. So our children are not benefiting from the Common Core. So I say, you know what, let's cut our losses and let's move right, you know, move along. And it's important to note, you have a child in public school. I do. And you're an adjunct professor at QCC. Yes, correct. So you do have education in your background and practical uh, yes. experience with your, um, with your child as well. But Carrie, I, so let's say more than 40 states have Common Core, right? They've adopted it. Do you really think in the state of Massachusetts that you guys are going to win this? I think we can. I think that what I'm starting to feel like is people who are uniting over a common cause and who find each other on something as simple as social media and then become activists on a, in a way that never would have occurred otherwise. Um, for myself, I think we can. I became active because of Donna's efforts and getting to know her on a parent level, getting to know the people on her social media pages, first as parents with asking questions about our kids and then also applying it to what I was seeing in the classroom. Um, I do think that it's, it's winnable. And I, I think it involves people joining together to really speak up and change can happen. And so, Donna, what's the next step? You have to collect about 68,000 signatures. Can you do it by mid-November? I, I believe we can. Um, and this is the thing is that a lot of parents are just stepping up to the plate now because they're just so frustrated. And, you know, we have a website, end, E-N-D, common core, M-A, dot com. And in the website, you can um, see where we're collecting signatures if you want to sign or you can help join, even if you get one sheet or two sheets or three sheets, or if you go out to the supermarket and collect, you know, two hours in between 
you know, dropping off your kids and going to your next appointment. The parents are doing a lot. This is a lot of groundswell. Like Carrie said, this is parents. This is teachers. This is an incredible amount of, you know, the community that's coming together to get these signatures. We're not paying for the signatures. This is just us out here, you know, collecting the signatures. So I believe we can do it. All right, Donna and Carrie, thank you thank so you. much for joining us. I know this is going to be a topic that a lot of people will continue to talk about in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.